Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Welcome to what is now the eighth episode of Fix My Mix here on Creative Source, the show where we're going to be listening to three songs from the community which are in process. They're not released yet, so um, people are seeking advice from myself and my guests about how they could improve these mixes before they go ahead and release them. If you are in the live chat right now, welcome so much for being here. I'm just going to pop a, a little message for you in the live chat right now. Follow the instructions there, and I'll be saying hi to a few of you later. Um, it's great to have you here, um, and it's nice that some of you are up you know, late at night to be here. <laughs> I hope I don't keep you too long. And some of you are like me. It's very, very early in the morning. Now, I have a guest uh, who is uh, going to be joining me today for the first time on this show, although I have been on a live show with him before, right at the beginning of of uh, the creative store, the creative source sort of journey, um, and um, I'm simultaneously kind of uh, sorry for him and not sorry for him at the same time because for him it's six a.m. in the morning, I believe. Um, so I feel sorry for him. On the other hand, he's in Thailand. I don't feel sorry for him anymore because he wakes up in a, in a wonderful place, where I'm sure most of us wish we were. Um, so his name is Ron Ward, and he uh, has a channel which I've put a link for in the description called Homegrown Indie Live. Um, I feel a little sort of under pressure this morning and uh, a little bit nervous about having Ron on because live shows are a kind of a a side, you know, a side gig for me, right? But live shows are what Ron does. You know, he just does the, them all the time. And he's very, very good at it. He just goes with it. You know, I muddle my words and I don't know what, which button to press and all this kind of crap. But he's on the ball with it. And I'll give you an idea of what I mean by that. Have a look at some of these uh, clips from some of his shows here. I'll just pop them up on the screen here. Look, look, he's got this whole, he's got the backgrounds. He's got, look, he's got the shades. He's got the hairstyles. Notice the different hairstyles and everything going on there. Much more professional than me, I have to say, in many, many ways. But I'm glad he's here because um, it's it's. I think he's just such a nice guy. Actually, he's been a Facebook friend forever, um, and uh, and he, he I, I watch his shows from time to time. He's got a great show um, where he listens to sort of independent artists and stuff like that. Um, so I think he's very well qualified to be on the show and give his opinion on some of the mixes that you are sending in. So let's pull him up right now, Mr. Ron Ward. Hey, there he is. Now, Rob, Mike, Mike when, I last, when I last saw you a couple of minutes ago, you were going to yeah. get rid of that green screen. but it, you... Yeah, it backfired. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, so you guys get to see, you know, behind the scenes. <laughs> exactly. In Ron's uh, studio. So, and, and what's how... up, man? Look, I... look, shall I tell you the truth? Look. I know Please. that you couldn't be here last week. I told my audience members because you and your family had COVID. And are you, yeah. you've, are you, you was, you were a little bit crook. We say crook here in Australia. You were a little bit sick at the time. And yeah, last are you feeling week better I now? Ill. I am. Yeah. I'm feeling yeah. a lot better. I said on my show yesterday that, uh, I'm at a hundred percent, you know, after COVID because I'm usually at 110 always. Yeah, so yeah. it took me down 10%. You know, I'm good. <laughs> no, and I don't make light of it, Mike, because it no. hit a lot of people and families uh, very hard. So uh, thank my lucky stars that I'm here with you today. Yeah, it's, it's good. I'm so glad you've recovered. And your son, I believe, was not so well with it. And how about your wife? How was she? Um. Ben, right, is yeah. okay. He got okay earliest. He got a little sick, right? He's nine, so, um, you know, uh, no inoculation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so yeah. the fever was a little spiky the first night, and he had a headache and a cough. But then, like, within 48 hours, he was almost like, you know, bored at home right and yep, then yep. uh it it probably hit me the worst and it hit my wife like somewhere in the middle of that 
Yeah. So we're all, and we've both been vaxxed three times. Yeah. Well, there you go. I'm glad you've recovered. I, I, I thought I was going to one up you a little bit because I thought uh, I've been not very well myself this week. Oh, um, yeah. And I did the couple of rat tests. I was clear, but I thought I was going to have something worse than COVID. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and that is, I thought I had flu, but not flu, but man flu. I thought mm -hmm. I had man flu, which oh, as man. we know, you know, I mean, worse. I'm actually, I'm, I'm a survivor of man flu from the past. Yeah. And, well, and they, they compare it, but there's really nothing to compare it to. No, there isn't. But it just turned out that I've got tonsillitis anyway. And, and Ooh, I, now? I, right now? Yes. Right Ooh, now, I was in hospital yesterday for a brief visit, not because tonsillitis mm. really needs hospitalization, but here they, the doctors won't see you. The normal doctors won't see you if you've got anything like COVID symptoms. Oh, so you man. have to go to the hospital. for. And I felt really bad, hey? because you're troubling these doctors and nurses and things with this stupid thing. Oh, no. But it was but, really bad. Yeah. And then it has got better overnight. So I'm not Did too they bad. Did give you those, uh, the uh, southern remedy here in the United States? What's, what's a, that? A, a good Kentucky sipping bourbon. And then you, know, you feel great. <laughs> I, I tried rum. I tried <laughs> rum a, a few times. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, hey, Mike, I'm in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Oh, oh. are you? I thought right. you were in Thailand. Why? Oh, I got the wrong country. I worked in Thailand, almost living there for many periods over you oh. know my career. But now, I'm in Saigon, baby. Oh, I'm sorry, I got that completely wrong. Don't how... even worry about it. But you know? how long have you been there for? Um. Well. As me, or as <laughs> as Rock and Ron from Homegrown into Music Live, just, or as yeah, no, just just you in 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 Vietnam. I, I started coming to Vietnam in 1992. All right, so you, yeah, and 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 I I've spent a lot of time in Asia. I I spent a lot of time in Japan. I used to work in Hong Kong. Um, been to China and stuff. And, and I wanted to ask you this, actually, because I always found the, the food's amazing, right? They eat proper food in oh, Asia, my. right? Am, yeah. Amazing proper food. Yeah. But then I used to have these secret urges for really shit food that I would eat back mm. in Australia. Mm. Do you get that? Is there anything? For me, it was mm. Vegemite sandwiches or cornflakes, which they don't, they're not big on cereals oh, in well, Asia. Oh, sure, man. What, you what know, do you go like, for? Uh, well, when I first came over here, I liked to eat those Pepperidge Farm goldfish all the time. <laughs> and there was this little place that had them. But then, uh, you know, not so much on the uh, on the carbs all the time. So, you know, but I might do a piece of pizza. They have Pizza Hut here. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, yeah. Oh, so good? I'm in Saigon, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty much you can get whatever you need. Yeah. But I eat Vietnamese food, dude. You know? Yeah. And, and Vietnamese food's great, isn't it? I go to Vietnamese yeah. restaurants sometimes here. Wonderful. Now, listen, because last night, last week you were unwell, um, what I actually did was I actually asked some people in the chat to come on the show. <laughs> I actually had, I just let strangers come on the show, right? Just just to fill your all, spot. Man. And you're do you like reckon I hippie, should do that dude. again? You're just letting anybody in. I'm just letting anybody in. I don't care. Now, should I do that again, do you reckon? Should we, should we just oh, have I'm one person? I'm fine with it, man. I'm, I'm, all, I'm going to put a link. I'm going to put a. I'm going to put a link in the in the in the chat now, folks. <laughs> and I'll only have one person. We'll probably have you for the last song towards the end of the show. Okay, so you'll come in and we'll ignore you for ages. But don't worry. <laughs> so I'm going to put the link there now for anyone who wants. Oh, hang on. I better make sure I put the right link, hadn't I, Ron? Because I gave you the wrong link earlier. Yeah. <laughs> well, I might have. Click the wrong one. Let's try this again. Uh, here we go. So, so folks, if you've got a webcam and a microphone and you just want to be a guest on the show, join me and Ron. <laughs> now, Ron, we're going to listen to some music. Um, we're going to get on with it now. Mm -hmm. First of all, before I do uh, talk I about the music. I was wondering when you were going to get to this. <laughs> but, you know, it takes a while. Rationally, so. Mike, I'm going, is this 
is this a show or <laughs> <laughs> could you do me a small favor and just sort of point upwards just just for a moment right, just here, point baby. up yes and ron is pointing to distro kid who are the sponsors for the show if you follow that link in the description you'll get seven percent off of your sign up with them at no extra cost to you <laughs> i'm glad you're putting the ring finger up there this is my anyway. <laughs> so um Yes, so the show, um, we are going to listen to three songs. People people who have sent these songs in don't know that they're going to be on the show today. I don't, I can't be bothered to email them. Oh, I thought they no, knew. They don't know, so it's going to be a bit of a surprise. Um, uh-huh. But I thought that was nice. But um, So I, I don't really have any favoritism towards any genres of music or anything like that. I like mm-hmm. to have all kinds of things on it. So we've got three completely different songs today to listen to. Um, now... So you have wanted, both country and western? At country and western. <laughs> That's exactly right. And I just want to say to Good. folks, so if you if you happen to play a genre of music which you, you think, oh, he won't have that on the show, that's rubbish. I'll have anything on the show. Just it, just follow the instructions in the description down below if you want to submit your mix to the show. And it would be our great pleasure to have a listen and suggest you how you might improve on things. Now, Ron... The first song that we've got up here today mm. um, is from a guy called Bob Lynn. The song is called Be My Guest. I'm just going to quote directly from his email here. He mm. said, I like writing songs, hopefully for someone else to play or to sing. My guitar playing is, shall we say, not so great. Remember this. I think it's interesting that he said this. Now, the only live instrument is my Gibson ES-335. Um, direct to a Presonus audio interface. The rest are all VSTs. I go from reggae to light jazz and pop. My biggest fear is writing and release something similar to songs I've already heard. Oh, my God. I've done that, Ron. I've written a song. And then after I've written it and released it, thought, ah, oh, shit, sounds just like such and such. Have you ever sounds done that? Sounds just like uh, George Harrison, My Sweet Lord. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Oh, I mean... Everyone does it. <laughs> Everyone does that. Yeah. So, Bob, I don't think you need to be too fearful of that. And he's playing a Gibson uh, 335, which is, even though I've got too many guitars already and don't tell my partner Susie, the 335 is still on my did. kind of bucket. Oh, you know, she, doesn't watch, she doesn't watch these shows. You know? <laughs> oh, is, that, are you, is, is it the same in your household? It's like I could say almost anything on here, man. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> no gives an ES335 right on cool guitars I like I really like them played by a, 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 well such a range I mean BB King springs mm. to mind right away um uh in terms of jazz George Benson I think probably plays the 335 mm-hmm. from, from memory um but yeah it's been played by a They're host. all around man and you know yeah. wonderful Good wonderful guitar. guitars so let's have a listen to this song and see what we think of the mix, importantly, because we are here to f- to fix the mix, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Let's go. So, uh, as I say, Bob Lynn, be my guest. Thank you. 
it, it makes you feel like you want to go, yeah, doesn't it? Just, yeah. I love smooth yeah. jazz. Oh. So just, I, I don't want to preempt anything, Ron, here. You're the guest. So I want to hear your thoughts on this. How are you feeling that? Well, I'm a bit uh, prejudiced towards this kind of music. Mm. And so for about half of it, I was just sitting there listening to it. <laughs> But I, I mean, uh, an original piece, is that right? I believe so, as far as I know. Well, man, I mean, um, it's well composed and well played, that's mm. for sure. Mm. Mm. And, and the recording, to me, sonically, uh, you know, the levels all were good. I maybe could have used a little more stereo spread on the whole uh, mix. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe. But uh, the guitar tone, mm -hmm. it's a matter of preference, but I don't know, perfect. Or yeah. maybe I would make it a little bit harder. Right. Turn, yeah. Or in some parts of it, right? But on a mm -hmm. jazz piece, you're usually playing through on the same settings you're mm -hmm. not going crazy on pedals like those <laughs> no, rock and true. roll guys you know it's all coming from the guitar and the amp yeah and then in the later parts of the song you know the different parts of the piece the rhythm guitar would change until he was doing it's like a chinking thing at some mm -hmm. point and then you know strings oh the those little keys mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. electric piano or whatever it was mm -hmm. I mean, would I have brought some of those in earlier to start um, spicing up the piece or varying right. the texture of it in the very beginning? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, I might have to listen to it a second time, but that did, that did, um, you know, come across my mind. And then something about the middle part of the high tones. I don't know. You right. could probably describe it better. Yep. <laughs> Just That's good maybe, description. Mm, mm. So, wonderful piece, and uh, totally enjoyed listening to it. Well, that's good. I, you know, I think that this is one of those cases where I, I'm probably going to be a little bit more critical here it, than anyone's because this was receiving a lot of praise in the chat. Thanks to everyone in the chat, by the way, for taking part there. Um, people were really loving this. And, and I think that's because... I think the guitar playing and the tone was really selling this piece. Um, I, I know that Bob said, or, or it sort of implied in his email, that he wasn't much of a guitar player, but I've got to disagree with you, Bob. I think you, you, you're playing that mm. better than I could, for sure. It was really, it was really well, nice no for that question. genre of music. He's a professional so, grade. Yeah, it was good, good playing and a great tone as well. Um, and I think something mm. which, because I've obviously had the benefit of listening to this now a couple of times, and what I noticed, and I've got some notes here, it was it, most of this was surrounding the drums, because these drums are obviously, uh, as he said, you know, they're VST, they're not a live drummer. Mm. And for this type of music, that's quite a big call, because there's a lot of um, subtleties and nuance in jazz right. drumming, you know. Right. And so I think, Bob, you've done a great job so far, but... I think that for a start, I, I felt right at the beginning, the hi-hat was a little harsh. Can I just pop it up? I'll just pop it up again for a second. Just have a listen, everyone, to what I mean. Mm. It, it, so it, it was just feeling a little bit harder and harsher than, than is normal for this style of music. And a couple yeah, of things uh, for Bob, who if, you, if you're watching Bob, is is that it's not just the mix there. I mean, it was just a tad high in the mix, but I think you may want to look at some different kits and things with your VST instrument. If you're able to try out a kit with maybe brushes or something, I, I, I don't know if that's an answer, but it may just help because I felt that the drums were a little just harsh is what I'm going to say. And that may be being emphasized by what, uh, by what um, was said by Ron about these kind of high mids sounding a little bit harsh as well. So 
Um, the, yeah, I, I think that's the main thing that I would be addressing with this. It's not a mix issue per se, because I think, as everyone agreed, the mix was pretty good on this overall. Um, yeah, levels but, good. yeah, the levels were good. Um, so that's a key thing in a mix is just to have that balance. But yeah, I would take a look at um, the drums, uh, both in terms of the, the VST that you're using, and you may want to program in a few more little subtleties in there, just those little, uh, you know, flams and, you know, just those little off beats that sometimes happen, say, on the snare or something, you know, just to get that feeling that this may be a live drummer because I can just hear at the moment that it isn't a live drummer. But you're close, Bob, I think. I want to encourage you here to... to dig into that a little bit more i think it's a, it's a good but nice smooth start to the show for this time in the morning isn't it hey it's a, mm. it's a good start ron isn't it we're, yes. we're chilled now right great <laughs> uh song to kick off the show i do agree mm -hmm. yes now um when this is sort of really fully mixed and he's i think he's very very close to it then a great place to actually release it would be distro kid of course and uh, they are the sponsors of the show. And this is all about the discount you'll get if you follow that link in the description. If you do follow the link in the description down below, it's going to take you to a special page on DistroKid with this yellow banner at the top. That banner is letting you know that you're going to get a further 7% discount off your first year if you sign up here. And let's face it, it's already very cheap. If we scroll down, we can see that a year's membership is $19.99 per year for an unlimited number of albums and songs. And so long as it's your own music, there are no extra charges and you get to keep all of the royalties from the various platforms. Platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, TikTok, Pandora, Amazon, Instagram, Tidal, iHeartRadio, Deezer, and more. Oh, I've just noticed that Bob was actually in the chat, as is some good friends uh, we have in there. I'm just going to say hello to a few people, Ron, because I forgot to do that earlier. It's not very professional. Uh, we've got Jade Star in, in the audience there, uh, the known to Jade both of us. Wonderful, Jade. Nice to see you here, Jade. Not not too bad a time for Jade uh, on a <laughs> on a Friday morning. Um, we also, I, I always like to say hello to um, the good people that are doing some moderation um, in in there because uh, it's really really helpful. It means that I don't have to do it, and we've got uh, well, Jade is a mod, and then we've also got Doug Kidder in there as a mod, and we also have uh, you probably not familiar, Ron, but Mimo Japan, who's um, he, he's taking the limelight away from me a little bit on Creative Source. I'm supposed to be the Creative Source guy, but he's, as a moderator and an admin, he, people think he is me sometimes. They, they, they say hi, you know. So let's not be too kind to him because he's, he's on my territory a little bit. Well, I've seen Mimo <laughs> on your shows, and I have to, to say mm -hmm. that a good moderator can make or break or a show or push it up to the next level absolutely and a great moderator because jade's a moderator on my channel yeah and she does and i'm sure job. she is here right and um you know i've got great mods mark tanner and uh and brian yeva over there and they just make me look good you know, they would never let me go on with my green screen behind me like this. I know Jade's <laughs> rolling her eyes. I thought my NDI out was going to work on this uh, or my virtual cam stuff. It's okay. It's, it's normal on this show for things to go wrong, wrong. So oh, I, man, it's hard to say too. that I wrong, wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Well, sometimes they say I'm Ron ready. Sometimes they say on some days I'm wrong ready. <laughs> <laughs> wrong, Ron. That's exactly right. <laughs> but, you know, you've got to roll with it, haven't you? Hey, by yeah. the way, I just want to ask people who are here regularly, just on a little bit of a technical issue, because normally I'm renowned for freezing like this. My audio continues, but my vision often freezes, you see. So I've done a little bit of a different setup here today. And also with the tracks I'm playing, it, give me some feedback for like regulars on the show. Is it any better than it normally is? Um, that, that will help me out if you can give me that feedback. Now, get, moving on, we've got a completely different piece of music to listen to now. Very, very different indeed. Um, it, was, it was submitted by uh, someone called Steve Davis, uh, a follower of the channel, um, but it's actually uh, his whole band. 
uh, the band are called, get this, I'm going to put it up on the screen actually. I love this band name. Zen Fusebox. What a great band name. Just it's always it's always hard to get a good yeah. band name. I like that one. Zen yeah. Fusebox. The song is called The Text. And uh, quoting from the email um, from Steve, um, it's called The Text by my band Zen Fusebox, based out of Florida. Um, we've been a band for about 10 years, but most of our work is long distance since we all live a few hours away from each other. Just sidetracking here, which I do quite often, Ron. The, the first time that me and you met on a live show, which was with, um, with uh, Pete Johns, I was on a show yeah. with you. And I, what I recall from that show is you had a project with a guy who was living a long way from you and you'd kind of done like a virtual band thing together. And I watched right. a few of your videos, really, really cool stuff. Is that still happening for you? Is, you, is that still a thing? We're still a band, but we're working on solo projects. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Right. Well, well. <laughs> we did it for three years, you know, and so uh, I just had some songs that I needed to write, man. And Brian yeah. is such a prolific writer. He was just like, boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. And so he's just released an EP of four songs that I'm, I've been playing on my show weekly or actually daily. Um, and... Uh, I'm writing some songs to play live on my shows before I release them, record them and release them. I, okay. I okay. have released all my previous stuff on distro kid. Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> but Whichever so that's what's going on with that. <laughs> Brian and I uh, talk regularly. He and his wife are expecting their first child here. In oh, a month or yeah. so or less. Yeah. So, so that means busy. he won't make music for about 20 years now. Well, man, he just built a studio out in his backyard. Oh, I mean, like a bit make music. full blown, you know, I mean, you know, it's still a home studio. He's going through the scarlet, you know, 18, but, <laughs> no, but, but he's, uh, jinxed him, he's jinxed, him, jinxed himself twice now. Having a kid stops you from making music. This is terrible. And then building a studio, obviously, by the time you've built a studio, you haven't got, you think, oh, I'm going to record all these songs. And then you put all that effort into the building. Tell me in the chat if I'm wrong. And then you go, oh, shit, I had the couple of songs to record, but beyond that, no, not he much. Did, though. <laughs> now, this is one of those guys, and he, um, you know, just is really prolific. It has been great working with him. But anyway, as far as the uh, collaboration thing, he's in Boston. So we did three years worth of music mostly covers uh, yeah, yeah. in the beginning. And then we, the last uh, single we released was in September, this past September called Lovely and Bipolar. <laughs> it's a great, go, go, a to, great title. go over to my links. I got stuck in the Boston bar, but there were challenges um, with doing it. Number one, we'd never, you know, met each other and yep. then, uh, still haven't never met each other face to face yeah. but um we were at about the same level of recording knowledge yeah and yeah. we were figuring things out so yeah. brian's the same age as my eldest son wow okay right yeah and so so he could navigate some of this stuff see yeah. i almost said the s word <laughs> That's okay. Better Shit. than me, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm not Pete, man. I'm not going to bust <laughs> you out like that. <laughs> anyway, it's it was great once we figured out. We started out in GarageBand and then kind of moved over to Logic mm -hmm. and still use both of those. Uh, and um, found an easy way to share files, you know. How, uh, how did you share them? Files, by the way, mostly over iCloud. Yeah, yeah. Because yep. we're using just, Apple stuff, right? But yep. we also use Dropbox too. Yeah, which you can use, right? So just lots of version numbers and figuring out. Yeah, I've added a bit here and then merging, or well, how does well, that? What we would do. That's what I have done in in more recent collaborations with other people because I had gone on to do lots of other projects, right? Mm, mm, Since mm. I've been on this show i've met mm. so many great people in the community because mm. i played bass a little bit mm -hmm. and i sing mm -hmm. but uh what was i talking about 
You were talking That's about, what I like you about, about the show, method. Mike. You always stay on point. I'm always like. <laughs> Um, you were talking about how your methodology, how how you yeah. were sharing the files. Right, right. So yeah. oh, we actually shared the project. Oh, just the project. We shared itself. a garage okay. band or a logic yeah. project. And so one of us would start it and then we would send it over. And then afterward, if we ne needed to, you know, put an audio track or two in, but mostly, you know, we would exchange those very easily. But one guy would get the project first the second guy would get it after and do they and and did you have to make sure that you're using the same plugins so that you didn't yeah you know because yeah yep, all that yep. kind of stuff so you had to we minimize plugins right okay you know because uh brian either you know he um has played through the apple uh what do you call them the sim amp sims mm -hmm. or an amp right mm, mm, so mm, we never mm. worried about guitar tone much you know yep. and um it was more about the song and the dynamics of the song and the vocals too i mean it's as long you know i didn't ever mess with them too much and that's why you know i don't want to be on your show yep yeah yeah see lou and Berger did did uh fix my mix for me and brian one time for a song called amber yep. and it was uh, it was an eye opener you know, of course, he was wrong on every point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was... No, man, it was great. It was brilliant. So uh, it was, yeah. it's good to it, look this. The thing about the uh, going completely off topic now, but the reason that I like doing this show is just so that people can get uh, a different perspective on their mix from someone who isn't their mum or their wife. Mm. Right. Because mm. those opinions are both not very objective and not very educated. So to, to get the chance for someone who's good, not, you know, we're not, let's face it, we're all home studio guys, but we've right. got a little bit more insight than the average Joe. So hopefully that will help people. Hey, there's a question for you, Ron, in the chat, mm -hmm. which I've just noticed from Glenn okay. Clark here. Um, how often do you find yourself using GarageBand now that you have Logic? About 50%. You know, because I have a mobile studio downstairs in my yep. house mm -hmm. and the studio that I'm in here with my visible green screen. <laughs> <laughs> Mike was like, you're such a pro, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix it next time. But um, <laughs> because I use iOS right downstairs and I hook in with like, some type of an iRig, right, deal, um, iRig Duo. And so it's iOS, right? And then mm. upstairs, which is GarageBand, I'm not, and I don't have it on my little computers, right, which are downstairs. So mm. I use Logic upstairs. I like to use Logic uh, now if I'm starting out a new song, if yeah. I can, you know. But at the same time, if I'm sitting down, downstairs at my kitchen table uh, because I can't go up because I I have five stories in the house. Oh, it's a five wow. story house, right? Wow. So I'm up here on the fifth floor <laughs> and I'm like, we walk upstairs. No, I just stay down here and use GarageBand, man. I know. <laughs> Plus I know how to use GarageBand, right? Me and Pete have been hanging out with GarageBand for the entire time I knew Pete. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I know that one like the back of my hand. So probably about 50-50, Glenn, right? And can you go between and, the two okay? Can you do hmm. projects between the two? They they, they, uh, they understand each other? You can go from GarageBand to Logic, but not vice versa not back, very yeah. well. Yep, yep, okay. Okay. And but, the, you and know, I really yeah. appreciate I don't really use it, but I've used both GarageBand and Cubasis on uh, my iPad. and um, And I do get it, though. I get that um mm, that free, that feeling of freedom because there's mm. you're not surrounded by too much equipment right and it's just about getting the ideas there quickly and and i right. and i really enjoy it from that point of view um but having having created this studio i guess i have to justify it and actually sit in here and use it sure man i know right <laughs> now let's get back to the song we were oh don't blame me ron you're, you're a sidetracker too, I can see that. I like it. Oh, man, I'm worse than you, bro. 
that my whole show is only that. <laughs> and then I'll go. Just sidetrack. Okay, go, so we're, let's let's refocus here. This so the song is um we, I read out you know it's Zen uh, Zen fuse box the text now um this is as I say a band so this is quite an interesting concept I think you'll enjoy this he says on every album we've done we try to do one song based on a single chord. Mm. <laughs> we 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 have um. We've I th- we think they've done one. Uh, oh, this one's in E, so the next one will be in E flat. So they go down half a step each album. <laughs> right. ah, so I'm they guessing... have one song. <laughs> so, so just one chord in the whole song is, is the basis right. of this. Quite interesting, and they just drop it down a key each time. So everything right. was recorded in Cakewalk with a Focusrite Scarlet 1880, and just uh, just to make sure that everyone gets their credit um, on this track is Steve Davis. Um, on bass and electric guitar, percussion, Peter Preston on vocals, harmonica, and Rich Mersel, not very good at reading out names, I think it's Mersel on electric and acoustic guitars, with a guest appearance from Alan Stegman on organ parts. This is quite an interesting track. Ron, what did you just t- say? Uh, organ parts. Oh, <laughs> uh, I thought you said that. <laughs> you tried to tell me to keep it, you know. Uh, I like that. Boom. I like that. That's <laughs> Sorry. Very, very Sorry. Well. <laughs> no, look, I love a good organ part, especially if it's played well. <laughs> See, as many fingers as possible. You, bro. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs>
Tell me the text telling me it's over She's coming back no more being a loner She says she loves me and knows I love her I can't wait for what's about to occur My baby just sent me a text My baby just sent me a text My baby just sent me a text Wonder what happened next Wonder what happened next Wonder what happened next Wonder what happened next I wonder what happened next One chord, one chord we had there for like four and a half minutes. Yeah, right. yeah. It was your did a lot with it though. Yeah, right. So, what? How do you think that worked, Ron? Like, how? Why did it work with one chord? No. Tell me uh, about. You have to go first on this one. Man. Oh, really? Do I have to yeah. go first? Because you know no, what's going to happen. Because I gonna... only have like one thing to say, so I want to. I have to hear what you're going to say. First. Oh, really? But I might say the thing that you're going to say, and then you won't have anything to say. No, you ain't. You ain't saying that. <laughs> really? oh, okay. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Well, I, I'll go then. I'll go the since, since you've invited me to do this. Um, first of all, very much. Uh, uh, this was carried by the baseline and it deserved to be carried by the baseline, which was just super awesome. Oh, man. Um, loved that. Mm. Um, I, 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 I the, the harmonica may not be to everyone's taste. I could have gone a second harmonica solo cause I really I, enjoyed I the harmonica. I had to laugh openly and joy when I heard that cause it was so unexpected. It was right. It was. And you know, I was trying to find a, a problem with the mix of all that and the B3 organ and all that. And it's like, Ooh, this sounds sweet. <laughs> yeah. That harmonica came in and I was, uh, yeah. so I, I was thinking it's up. Somebody said they were waiting for a guitar solo stuff that I, I could have had another harmonica solo there. Uh, that was all good um so overall loved the vibe i love the obvious doubled vocals for i don't know whether it was a delay or whether they were doubled but it, it sounded very oh. obvious for some reason every time i put songs on this show i keep thinking that lots of things sound like frank zappa and that vocal treatment sounded very zappa to me um from um, yeah. shake your booty especially it was like mm -hmm. very you mean. yeah very doubled and very obviously doubled no, i liked it i liked it so what it's i feel like the abbey road studios doubled like the beatles did you know because when you said that i thought well the, they did that too at double tracking but it didn't sound like this this sounds more like frank yeah exactly this is much more obvious where they were mm -hmm. kind of more subtle with it um but yeah so that was all good love the idea uh love the style of the song all that so what was lacking for me was that that bass was strong but the drums were not keeping up with the bass so, so we mm. often talk about that relationship especially between the kick uh kick drum and the bass guitar okay and and i reckon if you addressed that uh zen fuse box that's what i would be looking at only pretty much now that I think the bass may need to come down a tad and the drums overall may need to come up a tad. Small amounts, but I would focus on that kick and that um, bass guitar when they do hit together, feeling that kind of thump that you get with that where they almost become one instrument. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's how I think that could be improved. Um, and, you know, that's about it really for me. I, I, I The rest of it, I was having a mm. lot of fun with it. It was fun. Mm you know right just good fun well, music so what was your stuff. one thing ron i think well i think they should have used more than one chord <laughs> but that would but nobody's <laughs> oh there was the premise Sorry. i just i'm messing with you um i can agree with what you said about the drums because i learned after many 
lackluster and dismal uh, drum tracks. And I don't know what this artist used to make the drums. You know, what kind of... Uh, uh, interesting, oh, no, actually. Yeah, he they they haven't mentioned a live drummer, so it may yeah, be so, programmed drums. So, um, to bring them up, maybe just a little bit higher than your vocals, even. You know, <laughs> right? Yeah, so it's... right in there. So, because especially if you have an opportunity with a song like this to have that, you know, beat-driven song, which mm. is not going to be overpowering, you wouldn't mm. want it to be but to go in there with that bass i didn't have a problem with the level of the bass but i don't i don't because i'm a bass man you mm, know mm, i like mm, my mm. bass brian's always telling me dude <laughs> turn down the bass <laughs> but well see, i was I more i was more thinking off. that it was it sounded at the right level but my concern is that once you push uh, the drums up and the drums felt like they needed to come up, but then you start fighting. Yeah. You know, you get in that situation with a mix where you're oh, continually man. pushing everything up, <laughs> yeah. you know, sure. everything. And, and so, so my thing was bring that bass down, bring the drums mm. up and that they probably will sit together a bit better, but yeah, carry on. Excellent stuff. And, um, just my thoughts. And I, I, what was else was I going to say? Well, um, you only had one thing to say. Is that, that it? You've used up your chords, one thing. Man. It was about the chord progression. <laughs> <laughs> okay that's it you know i mean i agree with you on that um i because I, I like my uh my hip-hop beats i like uh hip-hop rock fusion yeah right, right? or yeah. hip-hop pop fusion mm. i like that and i would have taken advantage of that the mix sounded uh really good to me mm -hmm. the levels mm -hmm. the panning I tried to find well, the problem yeah, was... with the uh, stereo imaging in my head. Couldn't do it. Okay, let's just have another little quick listen. I might sort of go to the middle because I was feeling as well, because this is going to make me sound super clever, but I think some of the high mids were a bit harsh. Interestingly, on the whole mix, I wonder if it's been mastered and this applies. Let's have a quick listen just to refresh our memories. Let's go to the middle. So I'm feeling it kind of in those guitars and in the hi-hats and in the high end of the vocal. Kind of hissy, you mean. Yeah, right? a little bit hissy there, right? A little bit harsh. You could, right? Yeah. You could, you know, experiment with bringing that down. I don't like hissy drums myself. Mm, mm, mm. That has been one of my failings, you know, in, in some of my earlier tracks. So I really consciously avoid it so i i hear you there you and gotta that, be careful when you get that the guitar yeah. tone it's a cool guitar tone but i can't place it and it does it sounds hissy or maybe they meant it to but you know you do have to you know worry about the the listener and that kind of irritation it's, of, it's um, fatiguing isn't it mm -hmm. so to, when you listen to that for a long time it's just tiring. Right. and now i don't know the ages of these guys but it's something that when you uh get a little bit older sometimes the high end of your hearing goes a bit if you've listened to a lot of the loud music so you can tend to overcompensate with, with a mix you know um where you're thinking oh there's not enough high in there and you'll push it up and and actually it is too high and you're not hearing it um, and, and that's where I do actually advocate. I know all of the top pros out there will say, always mix with your ears, not with your eyes. But I do advocate some visual tools. I use mm. um, uh, Isotopes Tone Control 2, where they kind of show you where things typically are for a genre of music, you know, and, and it gives you a little bit of a visual guide. Are they I don't presets? All... Not, well, yeah, you can choose some presets of genres oh. of music. You can choose classical and they'll sort of tell you where, you know, say the bass and the mid and the trebles are normally at with that genre of music. And then they'll show mm -hmm. you where you are. And I don't always follow it. Sometimes I look at it and yeah. I think, no, they're wrong on this occasion. But if I've been mixing for hours and I've lost my judgment a bit, especially, then sometimes I'll use that as a bit of a guide for myself. Um, but yeah, especially if, if you're nice. old fellas like us and your, your ears are stuffed, you know, you, you, you've got to take oh, it. You have to watch yeah, yeah, you have to be careful. You have to be I careful. I used to be, well, now, let's, okay, we just one 60 second 
rabbit hole. Yeah, go, go, yeah, get, go. I was in the Air Force for 20 years. Yeah. And the first 10, I was on air crew, and we would wear headsets continuously and look at these CRT screens, right? Yeah. Listening and looking. And there was a guy behind you that would like, had a cow prod and shock here. If you, if you weren't watching everything. So, you know, I just feel like this is second nature to me, but <laughs> you have to watch, you have to watch things, right? Even, and it's, you know, kind of a no brainer that when you're using a doll, if it has visuals, man, you got to use it. Yeah. But well, I agree with you to an extent, but one little mixed trick that I have for you, and it only works if you look, I'll just grab my webcam here. If you've got like a, control surface like this only works really um, and that's sometimes during the final stages of a mix I turn my screens off completely so yeah, I mix using true. that now that gives you a whole new it, it's strange when you take the visual stimulation away and you only hear the sound you can hear different things in the mix really weird phenomena but it's very prominent when you do it for the first time you go oh shit that sounds different now. I've turned the screens off, but I do. I I, I do advocate the use of visual tools when you can, sure, because man. you get fatigued uh, from the listening. Um, anyway, I don't wonder how many times I can say the word fatigue in this show. Uh, let's let's... <laughs> now, I, just a little vote in in the chat down there. Who finds it a little bit scary um, if Ron was in charge of the aircraft you were on? Um... <laughs> Let's, let's get this clear. I was not in charge. <laughs> not in charge. Okay. Hey, Ron, I was just thinking as you were talking about that as well. Um, and someone was asking in the chat way back, right at the beginning of the show, about which headphones you're using there. Um, they're AKG, obviously. Oh. Which ones are they specifically? They are the 240s, the K240. Look, I've got. I feel like I should change over now. Maybe I'll just have doubles, just to just to be. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, just to fit in with you. They're good headphones, aren't they? And, they and what I four, find about man. them, I have two sets. What I find, I'm I'm about to do a video soon. I've been saying this for ages about all the headphones in my studio. I've got about 15 sets of headphones, <laughs> and they're all good in different ways. But I think this one, these, will win for me. In terms, they are actually very flat and they don't overemphasize bass. I'll say, but I will because they're the most comfortable headphones. I think they're mm -hmm. going to win the number one spot for the most comfortable headphones because they're so light, aren't they? Mm. You, you don't know. I wore head. these for three years. These very ones, yeah, the first ones I bought because I looked around. Plus, I order online a lot, almost mm. exclusively here in Ho Chi Minh City, and I can't get everything. So I yeah. read a lot and I got these. I used them for all of those early mixes. And uh, when I was streaming on Facebook, right, yep. I had the show on Facebook for two years using these very headsets. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, well, like, after like three months ago, I said, these uh, earpieces are getting a little crusty. So I ordered some new ones. And then I said, I'm just going to order a second set because they're so great. So I have those downstairs and they're really light. They they're sound very light. I've never they? had they, a problem with them. Yeah, they sound really nice. And they're just quite kind of refreshing to wear for mm. long periods of time. I really do like them. But folks, I'm, I'm not going to do affiliate links or anything like that. This is just a pure recommendation. The K240 Studio versions. I think you've got the Studio version, same as me. I just like the gold color. Um, but <laughs> the, <laughs> the bit of bling. But they, and they're not expensive at all. They're some no, of the... Okay cheapest studio headphones you can get they've been around for donkey's years in different versions of, uh, and what have you um but yeah glad to see you wearing those yes Good stuff I'm if i'd known you were going to be wearing those i would have worn mine just so you we see i had the box right there ready just in case AKG <laughs> wants to sponsor my show <laughs> <laughs> and they should so um now listen so that was a great track zen fuse box thanks so much for that i really enjoyed that but that bass line is just in my head now very very good and and as I say, I like a bit of fun music. I listen to some pretty serious music, and, and it's nice to have something that's just a bit lighthearted and fun. And talking about fun, one fun thing that you can do on DistroKid, that was my segue, by the way. All right, segue. <laughs> I like that word, too. It was, yes, yeah, segue. Segue and fatigue. We've got all the words here today. 
Um, so one of the fun things that you can do on DistroKid is use the Wheel of Playlists to get your music on uh, a playlist on on things like Spotify or on Spotify, I should say, which apparently, and I, I don't do this personally, I, I'm, I don't try and push my music at all. I make it so that other people can hear it. And if they happen to find it, fine. I don't really do any promotion, but you should. You should do promotion. Don't follow my lead on this and take care. Uh, uh, take advantage of tools like this Wheel of Playlists from DistroKid. We'll take a look. One of the ways to actually get your music heard on Spotify is to get onto a playlist. Now, DistroKid offers a really fun way to get onto one of their playlists with their Wheel of Playlist feature. Simply head over to your DistroKid account, go to the top right where it says Goodies, then go down to Wheel of Playlist, and then you start off simply by selecting a song, something you've already released, and then click on Connect with Spotify. Now, obviously, the further up a playlist you get, the more likely people are to actually hear your music and enjoy it. So what DistroKid do here with this feature is they give you three chances to spin a wheel, a kind of a wheel of fortune type of thing going on here. Now the best result of those three spins determines your number in the playlist. And as I say, the higher up you are, the better. So on this occasion, I achieved 1,088. You can try every, every day if you like, so maybe that's something you'd like to do to actually get your music in a playlist on Spotify. You know, it's it's morning time here uh, and the kids are going off to school and Susie's in mum mode. I can hear her from the kitchen. I don't know if anyone... The kids are getting yelled at for some reason. This is life. This is life. <laughs> oh, man, I know. It happens to me all the time. And my studio is really noisy. I do, you know, I'm not famous for having a quiet studio dogs barking and the the school i have schools like all around me it seems like and they have speakers in the morning and they say stuff in vietnamese <laughs> and it gets on my songs man so i just decided to sample it man and just Did go you? with it you <laughs> know with my it. noisy run with it noisy Absolutely. studio yeah so that no yeah no, no, you, we, no, you go, you go. What were we talking about? Okay, um, oh, we should, we should, we should talk about the final song. I'm sure we'll get, uh, we'll get sidetracked. Um, right. the, the, the final song is uh, not a genre of music that I normally listen to, so it gets more difficult to to judge uh, things, I suppose, if judge is the right word, um, to evaluate things when when it's not a genre that I normally listen to. So this is um, some electronic music. Now it comes from. It was submitted by. Uh, gentleman called marcus little and he but he goes by a kind of a band name even though it's just one of him um and that band name is electronic orchestra let me pop it up on the screen and the song itself is called groove bug now uh marcus says i'm electronic orchestra i'm from georgia i don't know whether he means georgia the state or georgia the country um but you know either way good stuff um have you ever been to georgia the state ron you probably have no You've never been there. I've been down to Georgia. Uh, the devil went down to Georgia with me. <laughs> no, and uh, it's it good, man. Great, good people down there. Was good he people. looking for a soul to steal? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I didn't have a soul, so no. Anyway, he wasn't worried about you. That's why you were with him. <laughs> well, I, I have not been to uh, Georgia, but I was on CNN once. Oh, and their headquarters is in Atlanta. Oh, that's, well, they, you know, that's what popped in my mind. So that's close but enough. A lot of great music coming out of that area. Fantastic of the world, music. Talking know, about yeah. blues and jazz earlier, I mm. went to some blues and jazz clubs when I was in Georgia, and oh, uh, just uh, blew me away. Just local oh, musicians, man. incredibly. I mean, I was just blown. This is back in uh, the early '90s, I guess, mm. and I was living in the UK at the time, and there was a lot of blues and jazz in in the clubs and pubs in the UK. But when I went over there, I'm not meaning to be just sort of disparaging to mm -hmm. to to the UK players, but there was a call, there was a difference when I went to mm. to some of the southern states and the local clubs and the gear they had as well. Like it was it was <laughs> everyone seemed to have the best gear in the states. You know, it's like. <laughs> bastards you know so, right well but, almond brothers man i mean those kind of guys who had that kind of instinctive feeling for that music in their blood yeah. and obviously you know like all of those bands and and jazzmen too right bluesmen mm. and 
you know, but I, my generation is all well, Leonard Skinner and those mm -hmm, guys, mm -hmm. Molly. Yeah, Hatt, that, and you know, that, they spawned all that whole Southern rock. Deal. Absolutely, yeah, really, really good stuff. It's just there's a certain thing they got going on there, and you know, I guess that's the advantage when you're surrounded by it in a place where that's what it's all about. You know, I guess that's that's the thing. But anyway, off topic because back to electronic music for. <laughs> 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 you did it, not me, man. <laughs> it's the Georgia thing that threw me. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so um, all of the sounds were created by uh, Yuhi Diva. Now, I, d I hadn't heard of this when I read the email, so I did a bit of a Google. And uh, you, Yuhi, I've used some of their plugins. You know, it's just U dash He. I, am I saying it correctly? I don't know. Yuhi, Yuhi Diva. Anyway, it it. It's very much it, the whole thing's created with this, and it's it looks very much like an old analog synthesizer. What I was looking mm. at there, you know, just lots of knobs that I wouldn't know what I was doing with it, you know. But I dig it. I love that people create their own sounds and they know what the hell they're doing with it because I don't. That that's amazing to me. Um, but yeah, so look, he was saying that he says he's not the best mixer, so he's instructed us to take it lightly, please. Well, we, we don't take instruction, <laughs> but but I'm sure we'll go, go lightly. So, uh, yeah, piece of music called Groove Bug from Electronic Orchestra. Let's have a listen. Okay.
Hey, thanks for that uh, electronic orchestra. There was a couple of uh, comments uh, from the chat there, which I just want to pull up, Ron, before we get stuck into this. Um, there were some suggestions there, which I thought were kind of interesting. Um, there was one there, great sound. I think some reverb may do one. It also needs a demastering de uh, Sorry, a mastering de for those sharp pokes in the highs. Good suggestion there. I like mm. that. That's that's an interesting way to use uh, to a de on a synth. Well, to use a de-esser on the master there to, to yeah, take the master, it. so yeah. it's a, when it aspirates or whatever you call that, and it hits that kind of. You know, I noticed that on a mix that you and Pete were listening to that you guys didn't say, but I thought one of the vocal recordings was over uh, compressed, making that those yeah. S's and T's just like, yeah, yeah, you know. And yeah. so I see what he means uh, yeah. about that that kind of a sharp edge on the uh, on the synth, mm -hmm. the one that plays the kind of lead riff throughout the whole yep. uh, track. Yeah, yeah. And another mm. suggestion there, uh, which I thought was interesting, how about adding some ethereal vocals, no lyrics, mm. just sounds. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting I suggestion. the same thing, man. It I could, really, could really work. Yeah, it could really work. So, so, but what were your impressions overall there, Ron? You go first um, this time. Good. You know, I love EDM. Um, I play it on my show all the time. Yep. I think they could have, he could have brought it to the next level. Um if he would have added some vocals because edm music unless it's trance and i guess this is more trance but even trance to have vocals even if it's vocal loops in it and then some um apart from the bass synth and then the r riff synth there were these little kind of poking pads that were mm. kind of just only in my left ear at some point, but I thought there needed to be a mid pad a lot of the time more and then not just on the left, you know, mm -hmm. maybe somewhere mm -hmm. from there. Mm. And then, uh, and yeah, other than that, okay. You know, okay. I, I like that kind of stuff. I love listening to it. Um, uh, it seemed like there were another couple of things, but I maybe I'll think of them when I hear you talk. <laughs> well, I I've got a strange feeling about this one. I'm, again, I'm, I'm it's only on the show that I've done this with you, Ron. I may I may do it in future, but listening back to some other parts of the song, I, I, this is a bit hard because it's electronic, so I don't know what to call the different instruments. But there's a a percussive melodic instrument right at the beginning. Let me just play the beginning for us again for a moment. Hmm. That one, do, do, do. you know, that'd be the, um, that was just poking out to me immediately. It's just a tad too loud. That was the only thing I had to say. But the reason mm. I'm a bit cautious about saying that is when I first listened to this, it was yesterday on a different set of speakers and it was mm. very prominent. And I'm noticing listening to it on these headphones, it's not so prominent. So it just could be one of those ones where you need to listen. Somebody needs to listen to this on a few different devices just to get a, a, a happy medium, I, I guess mm -hmm. I would be saying. Um, but really, that's the only thing I had to say. Sometimes about club the music, they're trying to do things to just get your attention. And right, you know, yeah, people yeah. are all, you know, in their cups anyway. <laughs> in their cups. Is, yeah, that's what we used to say, right, when, around my house, because we were Baptists when I was growing up. Uh -huh. So you couldn't really say stuff like drunk. <laughs> so Until I up. went in the Air Force, right? And it's like, what is going on out here? <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize you couldn't say things like drunk. That's, that's wow. Well, my Imagine. mom is very prim. Good job Catholics are not like that. Oh, now I've upset all the Catholics. <laughs> I don't think you'll upset them, man. I don't know a lot of Catholics. Are like, hmm. okay. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, it, was, it, it was overall, there was that, as you say, that it may be with that type of music in, in the right space. Because this is the thing. Some types of music are 
for specific venues. They're not to be listened to mm. at other times, you know. So, I, um, yeah. And this was well, one of those pieces yeah, of music yeah. where I thought, right time, right place. This is awesome. It was a good one. I would have, like, uh, it's just like any other genre or any other song. And you need some amount of variance. And I like, okay, there's trance is all good, man, mm. but you can only. And I didn't see it as a minimalist piece because mm, it wasn't mm. mixed that way, which mm, that would mm. be different, right? Mm, yeah, right. But uh, I would have had some more sense in the middle. Just more sense, baby. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I kind of had that on my notes there. My last note was maybe needs another melodic theme is what I had in there. So, yeah. Right. Oh, I forgot to say that. That was what I was thinking of. That kind of uh, little lead synth that he puts in and right at the end. Mm -hmm. Well, the, it's almost like you can't put it in there only at the end. And maybe I missed it before, but there's no, you have that um, lead riff, but there is no melodic lead. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And you don't have to have it through the whole song. But uh, yeah, and that's, on, that's where I think the, the context is important or the intended context from from the writer, because we're generally listening to things as songs, mm -hmm. whereas right. if someone said to me, oh, this is kind of a more of a backing track for a game or something right. like that, then yeah. I might go, OK, don't worry about the melody because that would be too distracting. You know, we just need a groove or a riff or mm. something happening. But if this is and, and I guess the same could be said when you're if it's just intended for dance. But on the other hand, but just listening to it was my feeling was, okay. I didn't okay. see that as a dance track, though. No, no, it wasn't the, even the right You could possibly but... dance to it mm. if you were really stoned. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. And you may think it was faster than it was. But, <laughs> but the thing about it is, is, is just from a listening point of view, it felt like, okay, there's some great sounds in here. The mix is good. I like the style. It's a little bit retro, you know, it does have that kind of craft work thing going on a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all that's good, but um, here's a thing. Uh, this probably doesn't apply here, right, Ron, but I, I love Tommy Emmanuel, right, the guitarist mm, Tommy Emmanuel. Now, he had a close relationship with Chet Atkins. We couldn't be more than a, we, I mean, millions of miles away, miles away from this genre, I know. But Tommy Emmanuel said what he used to call Chet Atkins and say, hey, I've got a new piece. And Chet Atkins would say, could I sing it? You know, like, could I sing it afterwards? And and, and I, that, that stuck with me as a great story. Like, even from, because Tommy Emmanuel doesn't sing, but, you know, he plays melodic pieces. There was nothing from this last piece that we just listened to where I go away and there was like a theme to it, which I could sing in my head or whistle as I was walking around mm -hmm. the house. And that's, that's the only thing I think it needs added to it. And this is more, this is not anything to do with the mix. This is to do with the uh, arrangement and the composition, really. But yeah. Okay. Well, so let me ask you this along yeah. those lines. What would you say the primary hook is in this song? Right? In five it's, seconds. It's that, um, there's doodle, 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 okay. doodle, 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 ongoing riff that doesn't change that much mm -mm. right so maybe some kind of a hook whether it's a vocal hook or the bass you know i don't know see now i'm just going crazy on this song because i really <laughs> like edm and i like i've made some semi edm tracks you know it's yeah, fun yeah. it's great yeah, so yeah i must say also i could not make a track this great that is a yeah, it's a too. really great yeah. sounding track. Mm -hmm. Sonically, it's it, you know it does it for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. It, yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, I, I've tried my hand at these things over the years, but not anywhere as good. But but anyway, that's our perspective for the first time listening to it. So I hope that was helpful to uh, to Marcus from Electronic Orchestra. Now, Ron, mm. you have a show coming up, don't you? Like in the next. Is it in 45 minutes time or so from now? Yes. Let me see here. Yes. So, right. folks, 45 if you've minutes from now. If you've enjoyed Ron's company here, and I know a lot of people have, I think uh, there's a few people in here who, who know you, have perhaps come across uh, from your channels. It's nice to see them here. Um, then do follow the link in the description. And, Ron, what are you going to be listening to today, Ron, on your show? 
today is my indie live show and um i have tracks from my peeps man <laughs> I, a lot of cool uh music i get new music every every week and people send it in by email or, right. or do you do you because i know you've got a co-conspirator on the show sometimes and and what's his name the gentleman with the beard well, and all that. oh well yeah that's my real talk radio show so i do a bunch oh, of right, okay, shows okay and okay. so brian yeah but he's a, an admin over at this group called real talk radio so we do a uh playlist show with the uh, songs from his group, he moderates, I facilitate, you know, I keep the banter going up and he has a beard. <laughs> yeah. He's a drummer, uh, the, really great drummer too. The conversation yeah. about the beard, uh, you know, I, I, I caught that a couple of weeks ago. That was interesting. I, I uh, going back about five or six years ago, I had a big beard, big long beard, and I had kind of long hair. Now my very long hair at one stage, and people mistook me for Jesus all the time. And that was just my personality, of course. No, but all the time people would say, you look just like Jesus. And I was always like, how do you know what he looked like? But that's that's a different conversation. Right. So I had to get rid of this just because of that, because I was always being mistaken. <coughs> um, I guess they thought it was, you know, the third coming or something. Well, <laughs> man, I mean, maybe you kept the criminal activity down around your neighborhood i don't know but you probably <laughs> just look like the big lebowski actually <laughs> the dude right <laughs> it, it was good i what i did notice though is having both a beard and long hair it's a lot of work it's like a lot of work you know unless you just let it go i mean people don't realize that it gets first of all when you first grow the itchiness or it's uh -huh. almost like saying don't do this don't do this because then you get through the itchiness but long hair, you you have to take care of that right, every right. day. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a lot well, of work. It's like women, right? I had long hair when I was before I went in the service and uh, really long. And yeah. you got to wash it all the time, or you all look like, or not, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you look homeless. Yeah. Right, so I mean, I had a really big beard after I got out of the air force, and I was in the job where I would go into vietnam and look for the remains of uh dead you know missing american servicemen right so yeah. i was all grizzly adam dow <laughs> i had a big beard I had, like <laughs> all the like laotian scarves and things and big ass hats so but no i don't make light of that mission it's a great mission and i yeah, did yeah. it but i yeah. that was my biggest uh, incarnation of my beard and mm -hmm. it's an itchy mofo man. yeah yeah and yeah you get hot and sweaty up there in the jungle oh. and it's, it's, it's going whoa so i decided to you know keep yeah. it off but if i you know i already look young and yet you but do if I shave my for, beard for, a, off, for a guy of 85 I look, you look amazing i, I look so young man i <laughs> you know just look way younger than you so i don't want to well i i i i look you I, look bad I, I don't know, man. I, I Most mornings I just look and I go, yeah, that's pretty bloody good, really. I'm For somebody who's abused himself so much over the years, I'm doing okay. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I'm knock on wood. I'm still still kicking. And Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's lucky I don't make a living using my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, but, so, yeah. well, I mean... It, can I just plug my show then? That's I what I really... want you to do. Yeah, plug it. Okay, so down in the description, go to my channel, right? And if you're not one of my uh, usual suspects here who's with me, go check out uh, my channel. I have three to five weekly shows, usually four weekly shows. Amazing. Right? Mm. And um, at different time slots, I have one that's a good time slot for Europe and the UK two that are good time slots for evening in the US. And actually, yes, all of the rest are kind of evening in the US. So I play songs from any kind of home recordist, I don't care what DAW it is, or mm -hmm. even if you made it in a studio, 
indie music, people who are unsigned, people who are writing and making their own music, come on over and I'll play your songs. And so this show and others I've seen like it and other groups on the internet or for critical listening of music definitely needed and a lot of people dig it right yeah what we absolutely. do over there is just kind of um we we celebrate each other's songs yeah in a way does, does that sound like i'm a hippie well it's no it I sounds am. great sounds great no, but because right how many times when you were in high school or in college you were at a party and you were playing your guitar and singing your song that you wrote mm. or some eagle song or you're playing the with uh you know your lame little band with a keyboard over there no one was listening yeah. <laughs> no one <laughs> even though you're like in like you know the guys and the guys who are playing sports are way cooler than you and then so fast forward to now no one's listening to the tracks you made <laughs> Your mom, you know, you're on. They're on Facebook. No one gives a, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rats, the same, yeah. So you got that one guy who gives you the sympathy comment, <laughs> and then your mom, right? That's your Facebook. And then, you know, <laughs> then you find Facebook. this community of home recording enthusiasts like Mike and Pete mm, mm. and masters like Jade, mm. who you know just, uh, you know. Uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> well, you're talking, yeah, I guess you're talking about the opportunity for people to get heard and listened to. Yes. So in a world where. <laughs> send into my show. <laughs> I have an email address, uh, which you'll see all over my channel, which yeah. is homegrown indie live at gmail.com. Email me your tracks and I will get them on one of the shows. And I, I uh, take all my submissions by email or through some of these Facebook groups, including the new Facebook group that I just created for Homegrown Indie Live. And that awesome. link is over there on my uh, channel too. I so believe, join me today. In about I believe um, that, that one of my moderators, uh, Keonra Music, has submitted a song to your show already. She, she, she had a social media post yesterday about it. And uh, I think she's hoping to be on your show today. I don't know if she will be or not. But yeah, I have but... a song. I have a song uh, from Keanu Music on the master list. Cool, <laughs> cool. So everybody who's seen Keanu around my uh, community, uh, I've never heard any of Keanu's music. So everybody has to go to your show today to have a listen, and hopefully it will be on well, there. Keanu said she had one song that was ready. Right. And she sent me, you know, a link to it. And uh, so, yeah, here's the way it works. Usually people send in a lot of tracks. The people who show up in the stream get priority. Yeah. So and my my shows are two hours. I cut mm -hmm. off in two mm -hmm. hours. And if you're there, you're probably going to get your song played. If not, then I still play those songs on a subsequent show or I have video magazines on the channel sometimes where I'll just play uh, some cuts from songs that I haven't been able to get to. So that's basically what it is over there and me talking craziness. A lot of great talented people in uh, the chats always just like you have here. And uh, yeah, please join me. Yeah, I mean, definitely you know, what I feel like looking around the community is, um, you know, the fact that now this home recording studio thing has been a phenomenon now for quite some years. Um, so everybody at the beginning probably thought if they just bought the gear, then they would sound great. And then they realized, oh, shoot, uh, I've got the gear, but I still don't sound great. So then people's skill levels have been going up. And, and I, I personally think that out there in the community, uh, it doesn't matter that someone's never even maybe released music or, or you know, of course, we're not like the big guys who have the Grammys hanging in the background or things like that. But, um, but you know, there's some great skill level out there. There's some great advice that you can get from, from your peers who are also recording at home. Mm. Um, and it's just great to have that community 
to feed back with each other. And, and I just love that sort of stuff at all different kinds of levels. Some, some guys in my community, it's very strange for me, Ron, because some of them have watched my video and said, oh, they learned, you know, the stuff they know from watching my videos. And then I listen to their tracks and I think, well, your track's better than mine. So, so what's going on there? <laughs> you know, how does that work? So that's really pleasing to see. There's some people out there who just, it doesn't matter that they only get 10 streams on Spotify per month. It doesn't mean their music's not great. It just means that they haven't marketed their music. There's some well, amazing music out there. Sure, matter. man. I mean, the, the amount of um, professional grade help about how to improve your recording skills in this community is amazing mm, right mm. i've been around you know in the from this group garage band users group on facebook right that's mm. where i started out and there's pete johns mm, mm, and then mm. a little later comes uh jade star mm. and so they started teaching and then at the same time you were on your journey in a mm. parallel universe at that time. <laughs> and then I was just over my corner streaming. And then you had like, um, you know, Thomas Rochelle, you know, Tom Rochelle, right? I don't know Tom Rochelle. Okay. No. So anyway, it's another streamer like down okay. at my level. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Pete became like dad. If Pete came in by stream, it was like dad was there and I had to keep my stuff together, right? And Jade was mom, right? Because she's really stern about it. She's like, Ron, turn it up, you know? <laughs> Something like that, yes. right? Yeah, I love yeah, Jade. Yeah. No, she always watches my my streams as a mod, at least for the first 15 minutes, to troubleshoot for me. I, I don't understand how Jade she's does amazing. it, though, because... Jade's projects, when you listen to Jade's music, like her music projects, they're complex, right? She doesn't do simple shit like I do, right? There's layers of stuff in there. Mm. She's a good musician. She puts a lot of effort into it. She does her daily shows, oh, and then yeah. she goes around and she moderates like everybody else's shows as well. And right? now she's doing another thing, a completely new video, uh, a digest daily on top of the other oh, no. thing and you were telling they, pete how you know you did seven days of videos in a row oh yeah and doing seven doing say you do five live streams a week that's one thing but doing videos you have to edit them man yeah yeah that was that so was she's hard. doing that yeah. so anyway i was saying that so pete was dead jade was mom and then once i met you you're the creepy uncle <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 i actually don't mind that tag i, I can run with that because it's something i can live up to you know <laughs> well, you, well, let me put it, you and metalhead hippie okay <laughs> okay you know jeff you know metalhead hippie i don't know no, 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 he's, okay. he's the he's other side guy of in our world in your there, world man. over there yeah. <laughs> well thanks for that anyway ron <laughs> Look, it's been you heard a, it here. Uh, it's been an absolute blast. I've had it's just been a joy to have you on the show, Ron. Will you come back again if I ask you? Yes, I. Will well, come I'm not going to ask you. So. <laughs> yeah, because of the green screen, right? Well, no, I no, I love my viewers too. Come to my show, and I actually have stuff behind me on the green no, screen. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was trying to show in the clip, wasn't I? At the beginning, I'm going to pull it up again just, just so that we can give Ron a little bit of fair play here. Um, Ron is normally a, a person who he's not, he's always a person. Let me try it. It's, the system's not letting me do this. Okay. System. Okay. Well, I can't do it, Ron, but okay, yeah, you're cool. not, oh, here we go. No, here we go. It's come up finally for me here. Let's go. There he is. Oh, he's got, hey, look at this. My bling. It's all happening. Like there's a lot of effort goes in there. <laughs> look, let's look again look, there's a lot of effort so normally i was expecting that today i thought he's going to come on there he's going to outshine me because are you using obs no i'm not using obs what is it no, i'm just straight straight in just webcam plugged in just that's it nothing oh so there's no uh streaming software like uh streaming no or something? no nothing like oh, okay. that at all yeah. okay so man i'm so i apologize everybody i because behind this green screen is just a white curtain, which is would be a much better. But since I have a show right now. You need the green screen. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Man, 
So I, okay. I do apologize. We'll work it out later. I hope it wasn't too much of an annoyance. I will come back anytime, Mike. I'd, I'd love you. I'd, look, I'd have you with the green screen. In fact, I may insist upon it. I may insist upon it. It could be okay. your trademark. Well, I would say this to you. Yeah. Send me a track, man. Just to send me your track. Oh, yeah. And send Sometimes it to I've... me via messenger. And okay. then you had to come on the show in the chat while I play it. And we'll figure okay. out when. Because I... Awesome. People freak out sometimes because they're like, God, Ramza has a lot of shows on his channel, yeah. but it's not. Pick one that is a good night, good time frame for you. Watch that one. That's what I tell okay. everybody. Okay, cool. And sometimes I also, forget that I make music. That's the thing. <laughs> well, that's what I, Jade is, Jade and Peter are always like so modest about their, <laughs> yeah. their art. You know, they do it. They do the whole thing minimal promotion thing yeah but yeah. if like you said if you listen to a, a a dread circus production or pete johns always outstanding so yeah. i play them on my show man cool. and okay you know they like remember. they everyone likes it yeah <laughs> it's like being on the radio man so and it's fun you know we mess around so i hope and you, you do. do have fun I, I like that about you every time I, I used to watch on facebook i didn't chat very much with you but i used to have you on there just you know when i'm doing things like that. it's always fun with you and that's good we need more fun in music when it stops being fun you won't see me around here any, uh, anymore <laughs> so. but this was I fun like mike that. thank you so much man. oh man it, it was a pleasure to have you i will invite you on again thanks so much to everyone who's been in the live chat and listen to us waffle on um it's just what we do it's a, it's a life skill what can i say uh, and but thanks so much to the people who sent in the music today very very important to thank them because it takes a little bit of courage to show your unfinished music to the right world on. and have people like us say both positive and negative things about it sometimes that takes a lot of courage well done um and you know i hope people feel comfortable to send in their music the links already there down in the description the instructions are there just send me an email make the title of the email fix my mix so i can find them easily and um you know i'm going through them i'm only doing three per show so i've got a little bit of a backlog but uh but you know we're getting there if you haven't heard yours on the show and you have sent it in then that doesn't mean it's not going to be played so stay tuned every Thursday or Friday each week. And I'll have great guests like this as well, Ron Ward. I'll leave the final word to Ron and I will say goodbye myself and see you in the next video. Ron, it's over to you to say goodbye. Uh, thanks to everybody who submitted three great tracks. Uh, I'm glad I got a chance to uh, work with Mike one more time. I hope it's not the last time. <laughs> and I will see you in about 30 minutes on Indie Live, and until then, real people, real music.